Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I really love the part where, where I don't really understand what you guys are saying, but I still have that feeling of what you are saying, so I just, and blah, 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 Elisa, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Not sure what it has to do with the candle, but I love it. <laughs> it's the candle of Cosmic Christ. Cosmic Christ. Creator. Yes. We love that time of creation. Oh. I've got something. Yes, here you go. Elisa uh vroeg of um Gaat niet door, ik hoef er niet gefilmd no. te worden. There is no battery in the... There is no battery in the... Oh, I'll put it before. Seriously? It's not working. Oh. 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 oh, this is a good start. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you... You guys can hear me without this thing, right? Do I need it? No. Do I need it? No. 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 I could sing. Ah. No. How do I get it out? Can you get the battery? One out of two. Awesome. <laughs> so, welcome everyone. Welcome. And welcome. Welcome. Great to see all of you smiling. That's actually that's really awesome. You're already smiling, and I haven't even said anything. I like that part. So, well, I never prepare anything, so I'm not really sure what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> and feel free to ask whatever you have on your heart at all times. You just raise your hand. Yeah. One of the things in this time, and I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of what they call mind control. Yeah? <coughs> yes? There is this time coming, and this time has been here for long. We started in 2012, that now the time was rising, and somebody feared that there would be chaos, and all of thought, oh, this is the most beautiful time ever. The thing is, the mind control is trying to implant these pictures in our heads of, <gasps> The war is coming, or something bad is going to happen. Planet X is gonna hit the world, and we will all, you know, that thing, fear, and um, suppression and anger attached to one thing. So, if we believe these images, if we let our energy draw that direction, we create this. We create that the meteor tour is going to hit the ground. We create that the war is coming because we are thinking about the war. We are thinking about the ISIS uh, things. We are putting our energy into this. So we are supporting it in one way. It doesn't matter if we have resistance upon it, if we are angry on it, or if we are sad and feel compassion with it, we still get our attention and energy to us. So how can we actually save our world? How can we create a world we want to live in? By putting our focus, our energy, our love, our hearts into the love and into the light. Into what we feel passionate about. Into what we want to expand on Earth. So I have this dream of this plane turning into a missile? 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 Missile. It turned into a missile, and then they <laughs> just to make it more eventually, right? So it hits the water just in front of Amsterdam, and poof, the whole water come float overflowed Amsterdam. And I was waking up and like, yeah, this is one outcome. This is one possibility. This is something we collective can create. But I could also choose to see it as the time is so bright, the time is so light that as more light we become, as more as our old fears is coming to the surface. As more the light is shining, as more the dark want to keep us, you know, suppressed. So by having these images, is one of the mind control patterns. What are we gonna do with it? 
Are we going to put fear into it? Am I going to preach to you guys that the Marcel is going to hit the waterfall, so now all Amsterdam is going to be overfloated? Or am I going to tell you that's one of the outcomes, but by giving our attention to the good, it is within my belief it's not going to happen. Do that make sense to you guys? Yes. Awesome. Great. What? See, it's not so bad. We don't live in Amsterdam. <laughs> 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 no, and I'm out traveling that month, so. And, and when we were there, see, we can make land out of it. Yes. Only the Dutch can. <laughs> <laughs> New way of creating, right? Yes. Is there any questions to this? Are you referring to the butterfly effect? Hmm? Excuse me, what? The yeah. butterfly effect. If I am... The butterfly effect but means that when something is moving, a butterfly on the other side of the earth, yes. that it will involve on the other side of the earth as well. So you can do that with mind control as well. If you have a positive mind, if you fix and visionize something you want for the good, and you do it with many people, you can make a change. Yes, and no. Okay. I'm just going to say this because I'm a very annoying person and I'm just going to... So, from the perspective you speak, it is about collective, have this mind said about we want to make the world a better place, right? So we collected want to control it. Yes? Oh. Yes? So this is beautiful in, yes, we can change the world by coming together in a purpose of um, expanding the love, expanding the light, expanding the good on earth. There's just one but. If we do it from a mind perspective, we are going to take control over something. We want to control. And control is not working. Control is out of another place than the heart. If we truly want to make a change, <coughs> we have to feel it. We have to feel our heart is guiding us here. We have to feel the feeling, the feeling of thinking about <laughs> that Amsterdam is going to sink. Give me a feeling of like, nah, this is not nice, right? So a feeling of a feeling of walking in the street and seeing the sunset and seeing how the light is spreading up the sky. It's giving me a feeling of openness. And that feeling of openness is the feeling of creation. Make sense? I just wanted you yeah. to explain. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well thank you for triggering that. <laughs> yes. <coughs> by, by what you say is, is what you mean is that we create it all self, that we create our own reality in a way, yeah. by our mind. In any way. So this world is one big world of illusions, right? Mm -hmm. Your world is not the same as mine. Mm -hmm. The way you perceive the world is not the same as mine. This room has changed four times since I turned into it, but you don't see that. So in that perspective, um, yes? To the first part of your questions, I cannot <coughs> even remember what you asked, but I'm going to answer anyway. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, so, <coughs> there, is this, there, there is this planet <coughs> Earth, right? There is these happenings going on which we have known for centuries. And those things we are not to change before they happen. But because the time we are incarnated in now is the time where uh, karma and these things no longer have such a big role. So we are in the time of creation. We are in that time where we become aware that we are our own creator, that together we can create a new reality. But there's still these happenings which needs to happen. We cannot take them away. They are part of the plan. So the reason your soul is here, you knew before you came here. So your heart is guiding you these ways. So yes, you can create your own world, your own reality, but your heart would always tell you if this is what I sent myself here to do, 
Or is this, this is me trying to be in denial and trying to be a race car driver? Make sense? Yeah. But, but? Um, yeah, so if I understand you correctly, you said, okay, we, we, we create our own reality in, in a certain way. Mm -hmm. But um, if we all, I mean, if, if let's say we were with 1,000 people on the whole planet, and, uh, and now with 1,000 people, we say, okay, I, I want to enjoy the, the, the sunset in Moscow, for instance, in your, yes. in your example. Okay, now, okay, now, now we all see a nice sunset. Yes. Or we all think that we will die because of an uh, explosion somewhere. We sit and look at ISIS. Right, yes. yes. And then ISIS, it will happen. So is that then in a way that there is a certain tipping point somewhere that the collect collectivism then, yeah, either wins or loses in, in this? No. Okay. I hate it. I, I, wish, I wish I could tell you people we're going to save the planet, there will no longer be evil. But that ain't true. Because this is a planet with duality. We can't have one without the other. So by you putting your focus on the good side, we can increase the good. And you can be in this energy of uh, light and brightness. So you can uh, expand your soul perspective within this. You can be safe for the lower frequencies, who uh, else will pull you down. It doesn't mean the war is not there. It just means you're not a part of it. <coughs> and it also means that eventually, if we let the love and the light expand enough, the wall and the damage from the wall will become less. It is exactly the same thing that happened just the other side around. So we gave way too much attention to the war and the control and the disattachment and the religions in a way where it's no longer pure. So it's from an ego perspective pulling down each other down. So there came so much lower frequency because we got drawn into these circles of behavior and disconnection. Um, and we simply need to do the same, just the opposite around. <coughs> it's actually about which wolf you're feeding. The one that bites you, the one that sits next to you. Yeah, well, yeah. And yeah, taking responsibility yes. for what you think and yes, what you connect what yourself you to. Take responsibility for following your heart. Because... Yeah. Um, Everybody hates when I say this, but I have to tell you. So Hitler, he was a bad man, yeah? He did not good stuff, but he was sent here for a reason. He was sent here actually to do what he did. So there is these people who sent here to do what they're supposed to do for make the world expand in the way they're meant to expand. By him being the bad guy, there was a lot of good guys. So he had... Um, Yes, a matter. Thank you. Um, Just like Judas in the story of Judas. Exactly. So there will always be good and bad. And yes, it is what we choose to line up with. We can choose to line up with the bad or with the hard feelings. We can stay within suffering. We can stay within pain our whole life. Centuries, over and over again. We did it for like 2,000 years, right? Remember our grand answers like, oh, we are still in this oppressing by women, and let's go free of it. We are free the second we set ourselves free. We are free when we realize that we can become free, because we are free. Everything else is memories. Everything else is DNA memory. We can even change our DNA. We just have to be brave enough to go through the emotional memories from our sisters and this life incarnation in order of setting ourselves free and breathe for the first time for ourselves and feel right here, right now, what we are, why we're here. And together make this place a wonderful place. It's not everybody who's meant to wake up, but everybody has the chance. We have to respect those who don't want to step into the light, let's say it like that. We have to respect those people who choose to stay within pain, suffering, matrix worlds. It's okay. It is their choice. But love yourself enough. Respect yourself enough to follow your heart, your truth, and follow the light that you are guided by. 
So yes, feed the wolf that makes you feel the most happy. <laughs> yes? You just said that it's possible to change your DNA. So how would that be possible? Oh, oh yeah, I told you. Oh my yeah, god. You, it's, oh, it's, it's, your it's your sentence. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is DNA? DNA is you take something from the mother, you take something from the father, and then you combine it together and you mix it with these other um if you if i lose you at some point right let me know because i have to translate it into words <laughs> so you have the chromosome for the mom and from the dad and then you put it together in a human form you have your soul which incarnates who has a memory so mom and dad's human forms have memories their sides have memories you put that together in a physical form so the physical form has memories from those two and you combine it with your soul memory as well. So you are this mix of memories. That is all you are. So actually you can change your DNA by releasing the energetic forms with is wholly new uh, trapped. Mm -hmm. So if a family have a family disease, you are raised with the, with the belief we all have heart disease. We all have heart diseases. So you go your life around saying that, yeah, well, we all have heart diseases, so I don't care, I know I have a heart disease. So you consciously, constantly tell yourself, I have this, I have this, I have this. If everything is energy, and I am one big energy field, right? Then what you do is you open all your fields up, like boxes you open up. You take out the emotions, the memories, on solid, replace it with a pure, memory, like a feeling, a life feeling of being of alignment within the who you are. You link to the feeling of uh, resolving the parts from your father, resolving the parts from your mother, realizing that you are your soul and your higher self within one spiritual connection within your physical form. From this point of view, you find out how you become alignment within that spirit self within the physical form. And shine out the light that you are. Connect with those things who makes you feel most alignment. And know that everything you take in is to serve the higher self the best within this lifetime, within this moment. And then you feel all the um, the energetic feels again. And then you did it. But the thing is, your your mind. We are raised with the mind has the control. We are raised with you have to think. We have to be brave and be bright and know everything and you know. Mm -hmm. So we create all these beliefs, we create all these patterns. And that is the tricky part. If you could convince yourself, every cell, every cell within your physical self, that you could walk through this wall. Mm -hmm. You could. But because there is parts of you which is yeah. not really you, you are like one big alien collective, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't believe that. It ain't possible. But if you mindset, your heart set, everything within this physical form knows it is possible. Because this is the vibration, you are just vibration. This just vibrates so slowly <coughs> that your head cannot go through it. But if you make it vibrate at the same level or your hand so fast that it becomes so thin that you walk through, mm -hmm. it is possible. Make sense in some way? No, no. Mm -hmm. no. You're and I really want to walk through the wall, but it's not my whole body who wants to like, no, I'm a warrior, I'm going to stand and look at the wall forever. So I really have this inner conversation. Mm -hmm. I can use a half lifetime on it. <coughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyone else? Um, yes. Uh, having another Wondering question. about stuff yes. over there in the corner. Yes. Yeah? Because we are trapped on thoughts, ego. How do you get where you want us to go? What track do you have? Come with me. Hold it. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to say yet. Isn't this funny? <coughs> so. We are trapped in our ego. Many people are trapped in their ego. Yes. Because we allow it. 
we are afraid of losing evil because we think we lose ourselves. We have to, yes, we have to use ego for a while to um, find ourselves. We have to. <coughs> got it. So, oh, you can hold this one. So, souls perspective want to see himself. Souls want to meet himself. So therefore, he comes to Earth, and then ego take over, and like, yeah, but I want two more than you because I'm the best. Not realizing that we are the same person, right? <laughs> but we needed to do that in order of creating a self. We overdid it. So now the ego, in this time, is lack of love. Because we don't understand the principle of love completely yet. We're getting there. It is fear. It is uh, anger and it's control. But control also comes from fear. So what we fear is dying. And That's why there are so many people having a burnout or a depression. I love it. Because they no, it's great. It's the most great experience ever. When you get, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> when you get a burnout <laughs> or you get a depression, poof, you need to do something. Die or live. Continue doing what you're doing, you're going to die anyway. So what, what do you want to do? <laughs> I'm going to go have fun. You know? So it is a gift. It's your body, it's your soul giving you the greatest wake up call that ever existed. What we need to do with that is instead of staying within the suffering and oh, it's so hard for me, I had a burnout two years ago. It's like, yes, I had a burnout, but I can breathe. I am still walking. From here, my whole life changed. From here, I don't have to go to work because I freaking hated it for 10 years. No. I, I stepped out of that matrix long enough to realize that I hated waking up every day. So now I actually have a little time, because everybody thinks I'm crazy, that I have a little time to realize oh, what do I actually want to do. So it's gifts. Burnouts, it's gifts. Ego is created over time. We learned that we have to speak up for ourselves, we have to become something, we have to be bright and have to have a like a education and then a work and then what? Who are you? I'm a salesman, <laughs> but who are you? I'm the son of my father. He was also a salesman, but what do you do? He goes, I'm a father. <laughs> okay, so what makes you happy? Well, to have a car, <laughs> like these things which we have taught that that will make us happy. But if you really truly ask people what makes them happy, it's not that. And we need people to go in and feel what do I actually feel. What is actually my own feeling. Not what I've taught, not what I have been reacting on, because we just do autopilot until we become conscious. So what do I actually want to do? But many people are trapped, are trapped they in have many, many fear layers of letting go of control. around them. And if I look at you, it's fear of letting go of control. It's like... You're naughty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest. <laughs> You're honest. <laughs> but it's true. That's yeah. one of the main things I so have to... There's this mm -hmm. thing where... Have you ever heard about Pandora's box? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Pandora's box. And it, this, is a, this is a little collective thing. So if I let go of control, I will open up Pandora's box and I will crack, I will get a burnout. So if you all the time keep all the emotions down, to not get the burnout, to not get the burnout, how do your body feel? It is stressed out inside. It feels every tension. You become locked up. It hurts. Maybe even if it's cold outside, it will hurt all the way inside of your bones because you keep that tension in. But nobody will see it. I will stand here. And I will have control over their whole situation and nobody will see me crack. But every day you crack a little bit inside. Make sense? Thank you. Well explained. This is for you. You don't want to be with me anymore. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So if you want to cry ever, you should do it with that one. It will love to one. be I have with a, you. A crystal. My mother was always wearing. And when she died, she, she opened her hand and it was rolling down. So, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um. Can I ask a question? Yes. yes. Uh, 
what if you have burnout and you want to do exactly what you just said? Go deep inside and talk inside and find out who you really are because you have built a, a most, much of masks around you yes. and walls. Well, I've break, broken them down, but then you say go inside within you and feel what you like and if you don't know, what do you do then? You start with what you do know. You start with, you start with what you do know. So if you broke completely down, yes. um, I can take me for example. I broke completely down. I didn't want to live. I didn't know what I was. I just knew I was an idiot. I didn't even know why I was here. Sort of. I told myself I didn't know. So I didn't know what made me happy. I didn't know what made me feel anything because I let everybody just cross my borders because I didn't know I was a person. So they could just do what they wanted. I couldn't feel it anyway. So what I did was realizing, when do I feel my heart doing like this? And when do I feel like my system doing like that? Or me jumping out of my body? <laughs> and I had to start with very small things. Because most of the time, being around people, that made me feel unsafe. That made me feel insecure, because I feel like what everybody feels onto those little toes, right? So I couldn't take them handle it. That didn't make me happy at that point. So what did I do that make me happy? Back to the sunset. The sun. The trees. The silence. Just like, I know nothing better than walking in the middle of the street with my bare feet and just sing. Then I feel free. So what I seek is freedom, the feeling of freedom that makes me happy. So you take these things you know. You take these things you can feel. This brings a feeling of peace, this brings a feeling of happiness, and you accept where you are. Yes, I know what you're saying, but it's very difficult for me. Because I have learned from a young girl yes. to reflect myself in others. In others. Uh, even, uh, for example, my father was very autoritaire, yes. and uh, I laughed only when he laughed, uh, to give an example. So I, I, I lost, I lost myself, can I say that? Um, and um, I think, I think the answer lays in a total stillness. That's uh, what I'm planning to do, to be in, in a, a resort. Oh, I'm going to take you up here too. <laughs> so, if what we fear is speaking out, taking our arms out and saying, here I am. What would happen if you did that? Were you ever allowed to do? Like no. <laughs> taking your arms out and say, Hey guys, here I am. Yes, that's very scary. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because here you are. If you go to silence, you just disappear again. So I allow you to be you. Okay, to stand out is what you say. Yes. But uh, so if I step you over you a very shy girl. If I step you over your toes, yes. <laughs> You at some point will realize, hey, this is pretty annoying. Yes. So then you have to say, girl, stop stepping on my toes. Okay. Standing up, speaking out, yes. being you. I would like myself to hide. But that's yes. Perfect. And that is what you have to come over because you are okay. there. You've learned that. I have that too. I yeah. I'm really shy. <laughs> <laughs> See, nobody sees it, but I am. I can be so shy, I can walk into a wall because I don't know what to do with myself. But on the other side, I'm also really outgoing because I'm just me. Okay. So I cannot hide. Even if I try to hide, you guys will find me anyways. Because <laughs> she's like walking over there without shoes. So <laughs> it's allowing you to be you and to want to hide is because you're used to not being seen. And if you were seen, that was wrong. So there's a feeling of feeling wrong every time you're seen. Okay. So what we want to do is vice versa. It's like every time I am seen, I am here. If people look at me, I'm going to wait around. If I love myself, then no matter how people look at me, it's okay. That's their perception. That's what they feel. But with, but with what I said now, <laughs> I choose how I want to meet people. So I, when I look at you, I look at you with love. Because I love you for who you are. So, yes. then you are you, right? Then I am me. 
And if you don't love me back, it's okay. Because I still send love out. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to take in how you feel. I know what you're saying. Yes. But still. It's scary. I, I, yes. And, and I think. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in my head. Then shut your head up and feel head. what I'm saying. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always thought and felt that I reflect that uh, in, in my uh, connection with someone else, um, I will be the one uh, that that person wants me to be. Yes, and this is so why you have to learn to find yourself, have to find your boundaries, have to put your hands up and see here I am. Okay. Mm. Okay. Where do I learn that? <laughs> <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> about what we learned. Relearn it. Just reset. Start all over. Feel. Yes? Um, if you, uh, uh, um, like Even zal ik met de microfoon komen, want ik denk dat het een beetje vervelend is dat iedereen de vragen niet hoort. Is dat correct? Hi, I think I got this. <laughs> There's a battery. There's a battery. Um, my question is about the boundaries thing. So if you are saying, what you are saying is true, and I believe you know that. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, according to you, there are no boundaries, not even physical boundaries. Uh, if you have a, uh, to talk about the burnout, uh, I had the burn out two years ago, and I am loving it ever since. Um, you lying? Yeah, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, noticed that I um, have physical boundaries. Yes. Um, if I step over my fear of being in that burnout again, uh, I still have my physical boundaries. Or do you say, well, you have so uh, so much mental power then, then your physical boundaries disappear. Uh, and, and I'm not talking just for me, I, as a, uh, with my body, but also also talking with people with disabilities or uh, a, a, a Lyme disease or. I get it. You want me to answer? Yeah, please answer. Cool. Yeah. So, first you say you say we have no boundaries. I'm gonna go back to that one. If your mind set, if your heart is free, if you set yourself free from everything within you, which it's not in alignment, you have no need for boundaries. Because what is boundaries? But if you've been through a burnout, you create a fear. You create a fear, you also have suppressed anger and this feeling of low self-esteem because it's no, not yet healed. In order to become free of all this, you have to respect your boundaries. But you also have to step over your personal boundaries. So the boundaries you have to be respect is like, I'm listening to my body, should I run a marathon today? No. Should I eat a cheesecake today? No, that is also a boundary. So what should I do? Well, I should maybe go for a walk and feel nature. Because that is stepping over my personal boundaries, but coming closer to my soul's uh, alignment. Yeah? So then we have these uh, boundaries in form of... Um, mm -hmm. So when you don't feel good inside of yourself, you have resistance upon the world outside of yourself. Yeah? <laughs> this is funny, I keep saying yeah. Yeah, you get it? Yeah? We are close to Germany, yeah? No. Yeah. So boundaries we need to respect is like boundaries of Hey, I'm stepping close to you, but I don't like you stepping close to me because I don't feel good inside of my body. I feel fat. Yeah, but I'm stepping over your boundaries because I don't find you fat, but I feel I'm fat. So you have to respect that this is your feeling in this time. It doesn't matter what the other person feel about you. It's what you feel about yourself. 
So you have to look into that, but only by setting a boundary, you can realize there is no boundary. After my whole, uh, my little uh, Syrian marriage thingy, <laughs> Um, <laughs> I was not so good with the physical contact. If you gave me a hug without me opening up, I would be like this. And I would become sick because I felt that it was the same feeling as if somebody was raving, raping me every time they tried to hug me. So what did I do? I made a boundary. I said, you are not allowed to hug me before you look me in the eyes and open your arms so I can invite you in the heart. Because then it's not people taking over my energy, it is me allowing them to step in. After me setting that boundary, I respected myself. I said, hey, I respect myself. And I told myself, you know, the consciousness then, I respect myself. So now I don't need the boundary, now I can hug everybody. <laughs> like, hey. But first, by accepting and respecting yourself, you can realize you have no need for it. You can't step straight for being all locked up to <coughs> I'm free, then you're lying to yourself. You have to do it step by step. Did it make sense? Yes, it did. Did I answer a little bit of whatever you asked? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you. You have more to say about it? <laughs> it is great. Boundaries have like two um, way of presenting themselves. I don't know what is wrong with my words today, but I find it quite funny. So, boundaries, two way of presenting themselves. There is these boundaries of our beliefs, our controlled boundaries. Don't step over this. Don't step over this. This is my safety zone. Don't do that. This is my safety zone. That is the boundaries we have made to put ourselves in a box so we feel safe. But that is actually a invisible <coughs> prison, right? Then we just do the autopilot thing every day, very safe, without expanding anything. And then we create a fear of going outside the comfort zone. This is the boundaries we really want to cross, personal boundaries. Then we have this with us having a good heart or us not really listening to our true feelings. So we let people step over our boundaries, our heart's boundaries, our personally um, self-created boundaries. Here in this way of looking at them, we have to learn to speak up. We have to learn to say, I don't really like you stepping over this. Boundaries. I'm not ready for hugging people for at least five minutes. Because then we're true to ourselves, we're true to our hearts, and by being true to that, we open the boundary up. We don't need it any longer, because we respected ourselves and our feeling in that moment. Make sense? Cool. Any comments? Whoopsie. Yes. Trying to speak in it. <laughs> you will find out. Uh, I would like to ask a question about energy. Yes. Um, how come some people deprive you of energy and other people, or being around some people, it deprives you of energy, and being around other people, it fills you with energy? How does that work? Can I take you up here? Would you want to come up here? Yeah. It could be cool if this was such a long, long, long room and you have to walk up like a thousand steps. <laughs> no, it came out like <laughs> no. <laughs> so everything is energies, and all energies have a uh, contain a vibration, right? Mm -hmm. And what we choose to do with our energy is, for example, my energy has a high vibration. You can feel when you stand in near me. You can feel something is sending out, but it doesn't feel like I'm taking your energy, right? Mm -hmm. This is because of the vibration in my energy vibrator 
it is a vibrator. It vibrates. <laughs> sort of kind of too, right? <laughs> so it wakes you up. So it vibrates up on a high level, on a level of, of light and brightness, which sends out, and you feel that. That is because I'm connected with my heart, and that reminds you that you have a heart too. So that makes you happy. You can step into this energy and you go, hey, I want to spend my whole day with you because I can feel myself. Mm -hmm. Then we have these people who are maybe trapped in their ego or trapped in sorrow or whatever lower frequency. Lower frequency, of course, vibrates slower, right? And they need love and they don't have it inside of themselves. They can't find it, so they seek it outside of themselves. So if they see you and they say, oh, there's a sparkle of something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're not even aware they do. So it's not them being bad, it's them being not aware. Mm -hmm. And maybe not capable of working on themselves yet. Mm -hmm. So it is up to us, what are we going to do? We could sit home all day and think, I go out there, mm -mm, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> <gasps> or we could find that place inside of ourselves, full of love, full of light. And when we go out through a hundred of people, we could just be in our heart. Shine that as much as possible to show them this is a place where you can go. This place inside of me is a place that exists inside of you. And when you are in your heart, when you are happy, you don't take that energy in because your energy vibrates on a higher level than the lower frequencies. Mm -hmm. So if you are aware that you are the highest frequency, you don't need to take in the lower frequency. That means I can feel everybody in this room, but I'm also aware that it's not my energy. I'm aware that whatever is vibrating of sorrow or anger or resistance, it's within them. I love them and respect them enough to, here you go, this is your journey guys. <laughs> mm. And only by standing within me, by standing within my energy, by standing within my tiki tiki vibration, mm. I can send that out and I can from here, here, help them finding that inside of them. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it's not every day it works. Some days I have been like running a marathon and run into a wall and then I feel sad and I don't know why and then the birds fly by and I was all of a sudden like <gasps> and then I go through the streets and then I feel everybody, you know? And then I take it in. And then I feel the sorrow and I feel the pain and I can't see out of my eyes. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm going to die. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to get, yeah, I'm going to be like 93. So, well, I'm just going to be blind for a couple of decades, right? So what do we do? What do we do when we have these <coughs> days where we take it in? We don't have resistance. <coughs> we don't become mad and say, oh, is this ever going to end? Accept it. It is okay. If you take in other people's feelings, allow it. Allow it to go in, cry whatever tears, even if it's not mine, and let it go again. If we have resistance on it, we hold on to it, even if it's not ours. Oh no, I took their emotions in, I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it, and then it stays there. So, oh, I took your feelings in, well, I feel sad. Who's sad? It's not my sadness. Okay, well then I'm just gonna feel sad until I know it. It's just feelings, it's just emotions. As long as we doesn't hold on to it, as long as we doesn't keep it in, then it cannot touch us. It's just a, splint, a blink of an eye. And it's flowing. And we have deep silence. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Elisa, how does it work when you're uh, connected with someone and uh, you feel the feeling deep inside of you and you still let them go? But if the person makes you accept them that much and you're <coughs> in a relationship with them? How do you handle that? Oh, um, I'm not sure I heard your question, but I'm going to answer it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So if we are deep connected with people, some of us feel them deeper than others. Hmm. If whoever we are deep connected to choose to stay within suffering, it is their choice. Yeah. Yeah. We can only try to help them from our perspective. But if they choose to stay there, it is their choice. So we have to let go. We have to love them enough to respect their choice and walk on on our own. Mm -hmm. And when you constantly make that a disconnection, mm -hmm. then you will no longer feel the pain. So it's only because there's a center inside of you linked to pain that you feel that person's pain. Yes. About energies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Having that burn out. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. Even allemaal voordat je vragen gaat stellen, even op dat ding wachten alsjeblieft. Dank je. Met welke manier is dat gesteld? What about uh, when you have to accept that feeling that uh, somebody else is, you say? Yes. Uh, but uh, um, I, I once felt so very, very tired, and afterwards I realized it was somebody else's. But it already had entered my system. Yes, for a reason. So if we do not link with that emotion, it can't enter. If something enters, it's because it is to show us something. It is because? To show us something. Okay. So, for example, sometimes we just have to become conscious about how deep we feel. Sometimes we have to become conscious about we have boundaries and people should back off. That was your case? <laughs> <laughs> just say. <so you> <laughs> and other times it's simple to learn feelings. So if you don't know how to feel yourself, it is very easy to feel everybody else and then blame people about it, <laughs> right? But it's a gift. If you don't know how to look at your own pain, you can feel other people's pain and then you can feel it through them. And then you learn to look inside. You can feel pain. It is not your case. I'm telling this to the people. For you, it's you letting other people go inside of you because you used to just do what they want you to do yes. instead of having yourself. You have a really good heart and you give it away to everybody. You need to learn you are pure light, you are pure love and you deserve all the respect in the world and it's about time you learn to respect yourself. And you're already doing an awesome job so you even have to acknowledge that. But when we come from a burnout feeling like I'm nothing, I'm crap, I should go kill myself to go and say, oh, I love myself. Just, you cannot say that and mean it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you try to say that, then you just feel like, no, I should really kill myself. So we stand here in the and from here we need to upgrade a little bit. So we link to something we actually trust. Well, I do know I have a good heart and my hair is actually uh, pretty straight. So that is kind of good, right? So we need to upgrade it in in terms that the f vibration can follow because we have to feel it's true. If we do not feel it's true, we are not upgrading anything. Then we are just lying to ourselves and we know it, our heart knows. Oh yeah, I'm free. Yeah, yeah, I eat very good. Mm, I'm very healthy. <laughs> Shut up! You're not fooling anyone, especially not yourself because your heart knows. So as more you lie to yourself, as more you're digging your old grave. This is how we make the shadow thing. As more true you are to yourself, hi, in this moment, as more happy we become. As more we accept where we stand right now, we will realize what we truly are. The only thing we need to know is we are not our pain, we are not our suffering, we are not whatever bad thing we have done ever. We are love and we are light, we all come from the same source. Well, that is me loving myself, <laughs> but still. Picking somebody else's uh, energy, don't I have to uh, uh, protect myself with uh, a visualization of, of light and, and gold uh, above it? Because that's what I do. Yes. But so we is that wrong or, or, is, it, or is that... <coughs> now I'm going to answer my favorite answer. 
that doesn't exist wrong and right. No. <laughs> yes. So it is right for somebody. Somebody have the mindset and the feeling that I need to protect myself. Yeah. But when we protect ourselves, we make a sort of wall. Yeah. And in that wall, we also wall up ourselves. So then we are not fully here. Then we are in this bubble, don't enter my bubble of protection. Right? So sometimes we take in other people's emotions. I'm not a master in it. I do feel people and sometimes, well, I take it in. That is honest. But when I stand within my heart, when I stand within my life, when I stand up here, I'm just me. So by sending the light out of my heart means that I vibrate what my soul is. And by sending that out, I don't take st stuff in. But when I'm insecure within myself and not standing in myself, then other people's feelings can enter. And then I'm not really aware if it's mine or if it's yours or who it is. But when I feel my heart and feel this is me, then there's just silence and expansion at the same time. So the best way of protecting you is allowing you 100%. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I'm awake. <coughs> yes. Hey, mom. No. <laughs> Isn't the, the problem with life when you go through the different layers of consciousness and then lose your ego, lose your soul, lose your all the negative thoughts and grow to the universal law and then your relatives ascend? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, so, all the creatures incarnated on this planet in this time is different, right? We don't only have one species. So some of the people only need to have, go through one emotional layer. They are not meant to ascend anything. Other people is sent here, actually almost without an ego, because they need to be prepared to help others letting go of theirs. This is the time of creation. This is the time where we have the possibility to let go of all the old crap and open up the fields of creating a new world here while we're here. Because the most awesome thing is being free in the three-dimensional world. We have all the senses, we have all the feelings, we have the hard connecting things going on, the cuddling and stuff. We don't really have that other places. So it's really about enjoying the unconditionally love here. But yes, those of us who sent here as the light workers is seeking this oneness, this state of oneness. This is the time of oneness. Oneness is not that we all are the same. We all are gonna sit here and look like me. And everybody has to have crystal in their <coughs> hand or else we are not one. No. Oneness is you standing in exactly who you sent here to be, you being exactly who you are, and me being exactly who I am. So together, all together we become one. There can't be one without the other. We need all the colors of the rainbow. So let's all take each of our color and come together. Then we create oneness. And yes, let's let go of ego. It's boring anyway, you know? We've been, we've been trapped in that thing for like centuries. And the only thing we do is like we're stepping over our own feet and being stubborn. <laughs> Seriously? Let's try something new for James. <coughs> Ego is strong when we are walking through the wall of letting go of this ego perspective into having a self. It's not that I don't have a self. I have like boundaries and stuff, like this doesn't feel energetic <coughs> alignment or I'm not ready to hug right now, but that's the self, that's creating the self, that's taking your color, your true calling in this life. So only ego fear ego die. And it feels like you're dying, it feels like, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die, like, oh, I feel so alive, <laughs> why didn't I do this before, oh my god. It's just fear. Thank you. Hello, um, so what do you think about that time? <laughs> 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 
Hello. <laughs> So what do you think about yoga, meditating, hours and hours, or is so or so? Um, <laughs> 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 you want me to be honest, right? <laughs> so also going to healers, maybe it's a shorter way to be myself or to find myself. Mm -hmm. So I personally. I'm not the type who can sit down for honors and make me for hours and meditate and say like, oh, mm, <laughs> it gonna work for f four seconds and then I will be like, oh, I got it already. This is freaking boring. My mind is like, blah, 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 100 kilometers away. So, but if I'm walking in the forest, everything comes down and just start downloading files. Like, oh, I should have done that. And maybe I should. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh, that's a new life. Nobody is the same. So somebody needs, somebody still needs these patterns, this control. It is kind of control. We do Kundalini, uh, it's just an example. So they have these Kundalini yoga retreat, where you have to go through a lot of pain for a million of years to become free. I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Free. It gave them a feeling of freedom, but the thing is that these things we created in the past belongs to the past. So now we have developed more, so we don't need these control boxes. We can actually raise our frequency higher than that. Many of these rules and tools is made for only for a while, and then we have to move on. So we don't stay within that. We want to go free of the pain by staying here with my arms over my head for five hours. You know, you don't need it. Maybe you need it once to feel it. Like I did the combo thing, you know, the froggy person in your leg and stuff. You feel like you're dying. I did it four times. Maybe I only need a treat. But I wanted to feel that. I wanted to have that experience. It was not that my soul needed it. It was me on a physical level wanted to feel, okay, I can cross the borders. So it is not necessary to go through all that to become free. No, you have to feel what feels most right for you. Mm -hmm. For me, I just had to go through my own mood. I just had to write some things down, run a marathon, kick some ass. Thanks. That's it. Then I can do it. If I should sit down and meditate for a lot of hours, I will start helping the people around me. I will start healing everybody in the room, and I will start pointing my attention elsewhere. For me, I'm out of my body all the time. So to sit down to minute and to leave my body will take a single second. I have to learn to stay in it. <laughs> so we have to be true to ourselves. Not listening to anybody else. Listen to them what feels this right for me. Even me. When I'm speaking, does this feel right within your heart? We have many of these <coughs> spiritual speakers who have their own beliefs, their own mindset, their own ways, we have many of these, also religions, there's a part of truth within everything. And that truth is so beautiful. If you read the Bible, <coughs> the essence of the Bible, wow, right? The essence of the Torah is exactly the same. But all the human grab around it with the ego, blah, 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 you have to take things around your head and pray 15 times every day. Come on, that ain't right. So listen to your heart. What feels right for me? Whoever stands there and preaches all the words, what within those words resonate in me? And then take your standards and take your choices from them. Yeah? Yes, I will talk. <laughs> But yoga is funny actually, and it's pretty hard. <laughs> I think it's the hardest thing I ever did. It's like coming, it's also a change of perspective always, right? So if you used to do everything in one way, and all of a sudden, for example, I've been a boxer for 10 years, I know how to stand, I know how to kick ass, but I don't know how it was to sit still in all these positions and, and breathe. Wow. I was shaking all over my body. I didn't know how to do that and breathe at the same time and not think. And everybody was just relaxed. And I was just like, 
Oh my god. Oh my god. How do they do that? My bag, I have bag pain. I think I'm gonna die. <laughs> it is all experience and everything what is unknown is to be known. Is to feel, hey, this is just something I never did before. And if I never did it before, I actually cross all my safety zones, borders, into an unknown field, not knowing what I'm doing, and it feels wrong, and I feel wrong, and blah, 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 blah. And after try two times, your body will know it. You'll start feeling, hey, maybe this is something for me. Maybe it is not, but now I tried it. So I crossed my borders, and I found a piece of myself. <coughs> so... <laughs> I'd like to ask you something. You were in the Bosnian pyramids. Yes. Yes. And people are talking about it. And I've heard different people talking about it. You told me a little bit about your experience. Could yes. you share it with us? I would love to. What? what? The, Bos uh, the Bosnian pyramids. There's the pyramids the in Bosnia. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so, the thing is, there's pyramids all around the world. And they were all created in order of. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna put you. You don't mind. Okay. So, they were all created in, in order of making the world self, the world self applyment. They were created to make the water line, uh, water. Ley mines. Ley Yes. Ley line. <laughs> Run the right way around the world. They were created to make nature expands and were created to make the magnetic fields be in alignment. So when we did attach them, because humans have this ego thing and they wanted to do everything themselves, the things started to crack a bit and now they are to be realigned. In Bosnia it's one of the first places and it's one of the purest. If you go in there, if you feel the nature, if you feel the pureness, <coughs> it is pure love. What was what were was they were not connected so when you connect them it's like taking the sun and the moon and connect it into the heart so it breathes within the same breath and it's so beautiful it is oneness it is showing us like we have the name is the dragon pyramid the sun the moon temple of mother earth it's not really a pyramid and then the heart it is like the breathing baby right so the beauty in it is that they were disconnected. When you stand on the sun, you feel this energy go like, and somebody will go there and say, like, oh, I feel everything, this is power. And when you stand on the moon, it's like the mother earth thing going like, right? It's a lot of power when you stand on the dragon. It's the, I am here, I'm ready to conquer the world. But how do you conquer the world alone? Why conquer the world alone? Why have all this creative energy if you hold it in yourself? Or why? put out all your energy if there's nobody to put it out to, right? So by connecting the forces, then it do like this, like a spiral. And that is oneness. And that is what I want, what I wish to teach people or show people is that we need each other from a pure perspective. That can't be one without the other. And if we want this world to work, if we want to reset the pyramids, if we want, we have to be in one with everything. We have to know that we are all together in this. So what I did when I was there were that I, I went there with all my love <laughs> and I wanted to give it to the place. I didn't expect the place to give me something. I wanted to share what I am with it, you know, just my love. I wanted to love it, I loved it. And by being there and connecting my energy to that and taking the energy from like uh, the sun and go to the moon and we say, hey moon, I love you. I love you to pieces. And the sun is right over there. And this is the sun's energy. So should we realign and go to the dragon? And the dragon's like, there's more animals than the dragon. That's quite, you could really feel you are in the dragon, right? So go there and say, hey, I love you to pieces. And the sun and the moon is right over there. They feel like this. So bring the frequency from the sun and the moon to the to the dragon so they reconnect and then you go to the heart like the breathing baby which barely breathe because the, when the three other pyramids is not aligned then this one cannot function so you bring it down and say 
Hey love, so this is the energy of oneness. This is the energy of creation. And what is symbolized creation more than a child? And more than love? And then the pyramid can start breathing. So it's symbolic, but it's also how the whole world is created. So for me, to do energetic work in Bosnia was the most easy thing in the world. Because I don't want to control anything. I don't want to manipulate energies or take energies from myself or anything. <coughs> I just want to show that the love and the light which apparently I'm made of. And I just want to speak out from the nature, speak for the water, speak for the pyramids, because it's so beautiful. They all have a story to tell. And, and like the river, there's this river flowing by. It has so much consciousness, it has so much memories. And I, I didn't wish to take it, I just wished to be the voice of it. To tell the people the pure beauty within the nature, the pure beauty of why we're here. And then after that, there were all the wars and layers and stuff like that. There's this too. But it is the latest memories. Let's go back to why we were here. Let's go back to the oneness. Let's go back to the creation and recreate that. So that was why I was in Bosnia. And I went to Egypt with the same vision. When I came to Egypt, my heart broke. <laughs> I have to be honest, my heart broke. I was. I came in and I have this memory of how it was to be here 3,632 years ago, right? I'm maybe a little bit old school. So <laughs> coming there, it's like, welcome back. And there's all these people in fear, in matrix, stuck, not seeing anything clearly. They're just walking around autopilot with fear for each other. They don't even know what they fear. They're just told they have to be afraid creating chaos and fear around something this beautiful. It became this big tourist in place. You are not even allowed to meditate or bring you stones. And the police almost put me in jail. <laughs> I'm sorry, I took his son class as well. So I just want him to look me in the eyes when he spoke to me, right? Seriously. <laughs> 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 I survived. So <laughs> you can do a love with love alive. <laughs> <laughs> so I went there and everybody had focused on the, the king chamber, you know, the big pyramid. And not so much, because all the attention went there and I just felt this thing, right? But then in the middle, and I don't know the real name of the pyramid, but I call her Katrina. In the middle there was Katrina, you could not enter Katrina, so it was just in the middle. And I went there and I felt the storm. I felt so much love. I couldn't I, even. I couldn't control it. I just. I start cuddling with the stones, <laughs> and I just felt like I was one with them. I just felt like I wanted to bring all my love. I wanted to show her that I loved her, that I saw her, that we see her, that we respect her, that we respect every little stone, every little memory that is within her, to bring back that power, to bring back that love and respect for <coughs> what is. So I went there, I did that, and I, I went to the, the small pyramid as well, and did the same thing at both places. And not bringing the love in the same way as the one to the middle, but to say, hey big guy, so everybody think you're the awesome one, and it's okay because I love your energy, but you need to know that alone, you're just like Poof. So let's reconnect. So I brought the, the when you, when I, I just absorb like some of the energy, bring it from one place to another, you know, so I connect them. So I reconnected the three pyramids. So instead of one breathe like, <laughs> and the other like, <laughs> and the third like, yeah, how did he have to breathe? Like that. So then when they are reconnected, they will all have the same breath. So in, in Bosnia it was like this, but in Egypt it feels like a brief because it, it has to regenerate, it has been shut down very, very long. So in Bosnia, oh not, sorry, Egypt, it just started breathing like, like that. And it will expand, but because all the tension around, all the attention around is tourism and it's um, 
it is not, they are not seeing it. They are not seeing it for what it is. So if you take all the rights, and if you have a person, say, you have HDRD, you are mental ill. This person thinks, okay, I'm mental ill, I'm nothing, you know, I, you're dumb, okay, I'm dumb. But the person is actually the most intelligent person walking on earth, you know, but we just don't see it. But the person don't know if we keep telling it, you are nothing. Sort of the same, because everything has feelings. The stones have feelings, we have feelings, the water has feelings, everything is consciousness. So there's no difference. The attention we give is what they perceive. So when we respect them, when we start seeing the pyramids for the love, the light, the power they are, for what they bring to our planet, we can connect with that and help bring that back. So that was just that. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> another day at the office, right? Yeah. It was actually funny. Let me tell this story about grief. So you're not allowed to meditate. You're not allowed to bring your stones. And you guys know me. I don't even stand up here without my stones. So I need my stones. I really want my stones. And. Apparently, you, if, you, if you look like me, then everybody knows where you are. And if you're not there, they're going to walk and talk to each other to find out where you are. <laughs> right. Crazy. So I came in day number four, and they suspect that I was doing stuff I was not supposed to, like meditate or actually loving the pyramids. So <laughs> then this guy stops me and says, hey, I, I need your stone. I'm like, why? Because you're not allowed to. No meditation. No meditation. And he's standing there with his ego. He only stopped me to show me his ego. Uh, that was it, because there was nothing else. It was only because of that. So he's standing there with his sunglasses on, being all tough and alpha-like, you know. I just <laughs> ego. So I thought, well, I didn't think. If I thought, I wouldn't have done it. So I <laughs> felt. <laughs> so I just felt, you know what? You have to know I'm not lying to you. I cut all the bullshit. I don't care about no meditation or no stones. You don't take my stones because they make me feel safe. So I walked over there and I took his sunglasses off and said, look me in the eyes when I talk to you and see that I'm telling the truth. My stones make me feel safe and I do not feel energetically safe in here with people as you around me. <laughs> So, <laughs> somebody says I learned to have to learn to think, but <laughs> I didn't realize all this. This was the guys behind me thinking, fuck, she's going to jail, she's going to jail, oh my god, oh my god. I didn't see that, I was way too busy with this. So, I look inside of his eyes and ask him to look in my eyes. I ask Eagle to look in my eyes. You know what he did? He looked at my hands. Of course. Oh. And he keep looking at my hands. And he said, can I see your stone? <laughs> so I gave it to him. And without looking in my eyes, he took it and gave it to the other man and told, <laughs> 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 which means it will be at the entrance when she's finished in here. Huh? <laughs> so the thing is, if you look from a pure perspective, because that was what I did, I did not hate him. I did not have resistance on him. I should truly only want him to see that I was telling the truth, and I respect the soul in him. So I didn't look at him like, hey, let's, let's see which ego is best, best, right? I just looked at him with all the love that I am and say, look me in the eyes. I ain't lying. That made him, his heart burn. That made him scared. So he couldn't look me in the eyes. And he didn't look me in the eyes. He put his sunglasses on him. And when the day finished, I was walking out of there, and then he was sitting with all the other policemen and the guns, and I don't know what we apparently are in an Arab country, so they shoot everybody. So um, I walked by it, and he said something, and like, yeah, she's still mad. So I turned around, and I went over to the table. I said, you know what? I'm not mad because of your rules. I respect your rules. I even respect you. What hurts my feelings? 
<laughs> and they're not used to you talk to them like this either. But what hurts my feeling is that you do not believe when I tell you that I'm not lying. When I say this makes me feel safe, it's because it makes me feel safe. Mm -hmm. So then his boss was sitting there and said, Sorry, ma'am, we will do everything to make you feel safe. Blah, 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 blah. And see, we are, don't you feel safe? We are protecting you. And I was like, <laughs> if you call this feeling safe, <laughs> we have to make a recheck on that. <laughs> but he didn't take his sunglasses off. He kept them on. <laughs> Another thing. Another story. So, this was one of the people I met. Then there was this other one. They have learned to say, I am from my heart. They have learned to say, I'm going to bring you so we can meditate. I want to show you something because you are special, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys know me. Oh, open heart. Sure. This, this looks fine. Let's go there. So, I felt I had to talk with this guy. I saw his eyes. I knew, hey, I know him from another place. I know him from a different life. I have to reconnect with this person. Even though I know he's not completely telling the truth, I'm going to work with him. So, and so I did. I'm going to have a, I'm going to create this Tiller voice now. And so I did. And, um, <laughs> so we did some energetic things, not, uh, not that important. And then he took us horse riding in the desert. That was awesome, right? I don't even know how to write, so I was like, whoa, this is going to go really bad, but it went fine. And he keeps saying, sister, sister, my sister, you know, this is from my heart, this is from my heart, this is my true feeling, sister, sister, family, family, oh, brother, the mother of my sister, you know, <sighs> overdriving a bit, <laughs> but I, <laughs> oh yeah, that sucks. Oh man, I'm going to be so confused one day. So... <laughs> So I thought, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, laughing is awesome. <laughs> so I thought, okay, he's a bit overdriving, over enthusiastic, but he don't know how to feel his heart, so I'm going to learn this guy to feel his heart. And I put my hands on his heart and, and help him feel it. And he was standing like, I'm not singing it in, I'm not singing in it, I don't know what to do, I'm going to stare her in her eyes. And, oh yeah, I feel it, I feel it. Sister, sister, I feel it. <laughs> so, I felt again, okay, who am I to judge if he's ready or not? He's trying, right? So, I will just allow him to try. And I sat there, I was just with all the love I had, I shared it, I shared my vision, I shared what I am. And we go back on the camels and the horse racing stuff, and then he asked for 400 euros for the camel thing. <laughs> and I looked at him and was like, do you, do you ask your sister for that? No, 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 your mother's gonna pay. So you gotta ask the mother of your sister for 400 euros for a, a desert trip which you asked me to come on. <laughs> huh? So what happens is, <laughs> I don't really understand human stuff, right? Not really. So they sit around this table and they're discussing, no, no, 400 euros, you must have lost your mind. And they go into this whole money discussion thing, right? Which I also don't understand. The only thing I understand is you tell me pure from your heart something about love and then you do something ego thing and then you lie. So you say something is your heart and then you lie to me. That means you lie. And that is so ego. And I couldn't handle it. So at some point I just start crying like crazy. <laughs> Out of nowhere. And this guy never experienced that. He didn't know what to do. So said, no, no, don't worry, don't pay anything, it's okay, okay, just don't cry, just don't cry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I looked him in the eyes and I told him, I don't care about money, I don't have them. So, I cannot give you 400 years, <laughs> that's one thing. But the other thing, you lied to me, you told me this is from your heart. This is my heart, how could you... How can you do that? That's not your heart. So what I did were that I touched something within him, behind all the playing, behind all the games, behind all the matrix, realized, oh, wait a minute, there's something real here. And he didn't know how to handle it. But he was touched, and that was what was meant to be. So when I went home from that, <laughs> 
I have all these um, this uh, typical me thing. So I went walking, right? So all these files start downloading. So all the memories of why we, we why we took the appearance apart, all the generations of people's egos, things, and not standing up for the true self and being in oneness came up. So it became so sad I was crying for three hours or something. I thought, oh, it's never going to end. But it hurt so much I was crying, other people's tears. <laughs> but I knew it had to go through me because I was there for a reason and I had to do that in order of setting that, releasing that energy, not only for me, but for the whole place. So the next day, I thought, I'm so done with playing the games. I'm so done with being controlled by fear and having a bodyguard if I have to walk three miles. No, I'm just gonna be me. So I went there with my feelings, in my eyes, with my expression, with all that I am. And people reacted differently. They were still like, oh, Shakira, Shakira, blah, 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 blah. But the second they look at you and they see you in their eyes and you are you, truly you, not playing their games, but just being who you are. You show them a possibility for seeing that they are human too. And then it starts changing. And then my energy being there could touch people instead of me trying to fit in and wrap myself in and go like in their control systems, you know? This is not how we help people. By trying to fit in so they feel it's okay that we are there. We respect whatever they are in. We respect whatever matrix they choose. But only by being who we are outside of the matrix we do not belong. So that was last week. What did you guys say? Very welcome. Thank you for letting me share in this story with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>